we need to understand what is urinary tract. Uh, so just to say, we, we have two kidneys. The urine is produced there and it travels through two tubes called ureters. And it is it comes down to a place where it is stored. It is called bladder. And from bladder, it comes out through a structure called urethra. So entire this system is called urinary system. The kidneys and ureters, they are called upper urinary tracts. And bladder and below, it is called lower urinary tract. So urine infection occurring anywhere in the system is called urinary tract infection. It can be upper or lower. The upper are usually a little more severe. The lower are a little, more, little, little less severe. So hence, this is called urinary tract infection. And if you look at the causes for urinary tract infection in children, we can broadly divide them into two things. One is called structural causes. And this is non-structural causes. Structural causes means developmentally, when the child was born, there was something abnormal in the development of the system. It can be at the level of kidneys or ureters or bladder or urethra. At some level, the developmentally, it is abnormal. The structure is abnormal because of which there is some problem with urination. So it can be a block in the passage of the urine or urine is flowing in the opposite direction, which is, it is not supposed to. So these are structural causes. Then we have non-structural causes. Non-structural causes, all the structure is normal. But the issue with hygiene, because of issue with the hygiene, that urinary tract is getting infected repeatedly. So these two are the main causes, structural causes and non-structural causes. The urinary tract infection, uh, because it, like any other infection, the most common uh, presentation is fever. So majority of them present with high-grade fever. But sometimes what happens is there are a set of symptoms which are not related to fever at all. Suppose if you take a younger child or maybe infant, what you say, less than one year age, he can present with uh, vomiting, he can present with uh, loose motions, or he can present with something called refusal to feed. Refusal to feed is child will not accept feeds. Or baby may become dull and activity might be lost. All these can be present in urinary tract infection. Or sometimes babies can have jaundice also. So all this can be presentation of urinary tract infection. So any any fever or any of these things, you should always suspect. Uh, one of the things we should suspect is urinary tract infection. It elder children may complain of burning uh, uh, sensation while passing urine. Or they may say that uh, urine has got some blood in it. Or they may say that urine has changed color to yellow or like pus. So elder children can complain of these things. Any child who comes with fever, one of the things we should always keep in mind is urinary tract infection. So any child who comes with fever, we do routine blood tests. At the same time, we do something called complete urine examination. Complete urine examination is a very basic urine test, which will tell us if there is any possibility of urine infection. There is something called pus cells we look into. And from some other parameters also we look into and we can decide whether the fever or abnormality is because of urine infection. The proper test would be urine culture, but urine culture usually takes time to come. So that will take three, three days to come. So we cannot wait for that. So at least for diagnosis, complete urine examination is sufficient. So once complete urine examination is positive for urine infection, then we start the treatment. And before that, we send urine for urine culture. Now urine culture is something which will tell us which is the organism and what are the antibiotics we can use in all this. So this is the diagnosis of urinary tract infection. Now infection is diagnosed, infection is treated. Now we need to find out what is the cause which led to this infection. For that, we need to get something called an ultrasound. So ultrasound scan will look at our kidneys, our entire urinary system, and try to find out if there is any abnormality there. Then we have something called, some special x-rays are there, which are called MCUG. Or these things will tell us, again, any structural abnormalities are there or not. Based on these two, then we have got a lot of tests which we can which can, we can do or we may avoid based on these two tests. So these two are very basic tests, ultrasound and MCOG. Based on that, we can proceed with further tests. Now coming to treatment, uh, treatment we can divide into two phases, like treatment of the infection itself. So that, that will require antibiotics. Antibiotics will treat the infection. Now we try to find out what is the cause for this infection. Suppose it is a structural cause. There is some abnormality in the structure of the urinary system. The abnormality has to be corrected and most of the times it is surgical correction. We need to operate on the child and correct the thing. Suppose there is a block which is not allowing urine to flow freely. 
So we need to operate and clear the block. Or suppose the urine is flowing in opposite direction, which is sometimes you call VUR. That needs to be corrected. So structural causes will require some correction, mostly surgical. Then non-structural causes. Non-structural causes, as I told you, they are related to the hygiene. So hygiene, perineal hygiene is very important. We tell them uh, wash perineal area after passing urine or passing stools. Avoid diapers. Then avoid constipation. Constipation is also one of the important causes for urine infection in children. So avoid constipation. So these are the uh, treatment options for non-structural causes of urinary infection. Preventive measures. Again, you start with non-structural causes. So general hygiene. Hygiene is very important. Avoid diapers. Then uh, drink plenty of water. Plenty of water and also fruit juices. Fruit juices mainly citrus based. That means lemon juice, something like that. So all this will uh, prevent urinary infections. And uh, there are some conditions where we need, need to use some medications also. And sometimes we do some a small surgery called circumcision, which is, often, which is usually done for religious reasons in Muslim uh, community that we offer to some children to decrease the chances of getting urinary infections.